Welcome to PR Talk, sponsored by the PRSA of Oregon and part of the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. This is your host, Amy Rosenberg, founder of Veracity and author of A Modern Guide to Public Relations. Help other people find our podcast by subscribing, rating, giving us a review, or sharing on social media. Hi, everybody. I have Vanessa Newroar here. She's the VP of Customer Success for Muckrack. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah, thanks for coming on. But so, okay, first, you're going to have to tell everyone, A, what Muckrack is, B, which we use all the time, by the way, and we love, (laughs) and B, what does customer success mean? And then C, sorry to just go and like, fast succession. I saw that you're an amateur stand-up comedian, so you might have to tell us about that too. (laughs) I'm happy to. Yeah, so I'll start with Muckrack. We're a B2B SaaS company that serves the public relations industry. And the way that we serve PR professionals is really through three different mechanisms, one of which is by providing a really robust media database. So that way you can search for topics or company names or recent releases and understand very quickly which journalists are covering those topics the most. The second way that we really serve the industry is through media monitoring. Anytime you need to get an update about news coverage, you can set that up proactively in our platform. So that way you can get that news coverage delivered to your email and rely on that as a means of communication. And then the last way that we really support the industry is through reporting. So being able to compile a month's worth of coverage or a quarter or an entire year and doing some year over year comparisons, you can definitely lean on us for that too, as well as sentiment scoring and other metrics that you can ultimately bring back to your clients or your leadership team. Yeah. And the way that customer success comes into play at Muckrack is making sure that ultimately our product is delivering value and that our customers can look to us as experts, both of the product and the industry too. So within my department, we have four functions. There's our CSM team and the CSM team is the relationship manager with all of our customers. So they're that long-term point of contact to make sure that things are going well and that you're continuing to see better results through using the platform. Then we have our support team that Anytime you reach out to us through the site you're engaging with for any real-time questions or advice that you may need. We also have a customer onboarding team that's helping you in the first 60 to 90 days to make sure your account is getting set up properly and that you're able to bring in any data from outside platforms. And then the last team that we've recently established within our department is customer education. And I'm really excited about that team because it's enabling us to build courses and certifications for our product to ultimately help people get up to speed even quicker than they do already. Oh, okay. So... Tell, first, tell us about your being a comedian. I think that's super interesting <laughs> and more fun. And then I, yeah. I do kind of want to get into like muckrack and customer success and everything. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I I did my first stand-up comedy workshop in 2019. And I never thought about doing that previously until I met one of the headline speakers at a business conference that I attended. And I was so impressed with his presentation style and his delivery. And I went up to him afterwards and asked him candidly how he got to this point and how he got to be so comfortable on stage. And he said that stand up comedy is what really pushed him over the edge and made him an even better public speaker. So I'm like, well, shoot, I guess I need to give that a try now. So he recommended a workshop in New York City that I ended up enrolling in. And it was only two weeks long. So I figured even if I hated it, or if even if it wasn't for me. It was only two weeks that I was dedicating to it. So it couldn't be that bad. And I loved it. I definitely loved it way more than I thought I would. And I, part of the reason that I loved it too, is because I, it exposed me to other people that I never would have met otherwise if I hadn't participated in the workshop. And I really admired the people that were attending. A lot of them are aspiring comedians. And so I was able to learn a lot from them. And for me, it was really just a vehicle to improve my public speaking skills. But regardless, it's something that I now consider it something that's really strong in my toolkit. And I would love to keep doing it. I ended up enrolling in the same workshop again in early 2020, thankfully in February, but I haven't returned since to that workshop. I hope to do it again, either later this year or early next. Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, it feels like there's nothing more vulnerable than being a comedian, (laughs) right? I mean, I don't know a lot about it, but it sounds really scary. (laughs) 
It is. It's very scary, especially when you're in a workshop with folks that are aspiring comedians. And part of the workshop entails reading your set in front of the other workshop attendees. So that part felt more vulnerable to me than when I got on stage and delivered my set in front of just a room of people at a comedy club in New York City. I think it was definitely more intimidating to do that in front of a a room of people that are aspiring comedians themselves. Yeah. Like, Oh, they might know what they're doing. So right. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. I'm I'm just curious. How do you think that that helped you with your public speaking career? Cause it looks like you do a lot of speaking engagements. Yeah. So I think it's helped me tremendously. I mean, I have to say I noticed a complete difference in my attitude getting on stage before I did that comedy workshop. And after doing that workshop, I felt so much more confident and at ease after I did that workshop. And I think it's because like you said, it, it's one of the most vulnerable states you can be in trying to make someone laugh and trying to do that in front of room, a room of people. And, you know, if your joke doesn't land, you have to keep going. So I think being able to get across that mental hurdle for me was huge and definitely made public speaking at a business conference feel a lot less intimidating. Yeah, for sure. So, um, tell me, what do you do as VP of customer, customer service or customer success for Muckrack? Like what's your day-to-day role? Yeah. Great question. It varies quite a bit, which is one of the reasons I love being in customer success because it always keeps you on your toes, but a typical day-to-day for me is supporting my team. So definitely making sure that everyone on my team has what they need to be successful in their roles. And then also connecting directly with customers too. It's one of my favorite parts of the job as well to stay connected to the customer and make sure that I, my team is set up in a way that will continue to meet their needs. And so how do you, so Kaylin, my um, assistant AA loves muckrock. And she said like, the reason she likes it so much is because she, whenever she has a question, she can get an answer. And Mm -hmm. so what's like the protocol, like what's the system? Like, so PR is very customer oriented, whether, especially if you're at a firm and a lot of our listeners are at firms. And so I always think about myself as like customer service first and foremost. So do you have kind of any just like random tips on how to handle customer service or is there a unique approach that Muckrack has? Yeah. Yeah. That's another great question for us. We want customer service to be extremely accessible. I know it's a pain and I've felt this way too, of course, whenever I'm reaching out to a different company for customer service needs, it's always a pain when you feel like you can't get to a human and you're, Mm -hmm. you get stuck in a loop. We don't want that to ever be the case at Muckrack. If you need real-time help, we want to meet you there with that support. So we do have a live chat that's hosted on our site. So when you are using the product, you can engage with us and get a very quick response. We pride ourselves on quick response times and not just quick, but also helpful because I feel like just being fast isn't enough. You have to be fast and be able to provide value back to the customer. So one of the things that we've done over the past couple of months is continue to invest in our knowledge base. The more that we create these self serve materials, the quicker also that our customers can get the answers that they need, even outside of speaking with a human on our team as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's and also when you're working with tech, you can't, it's like, I need the answer to the question right now. <laughs> yep. So having someone available is very helpful because otherwise you just go on with your day and just like not do the thing you're trying to do. Exactly. Um, with Muckrack, I guess um, the question would be, you know, what makes Muckrack different from other PR tools? Yeah. So for us, our connection to the journalism industry is huge. We have journalists using Muckrack directly themselves. And I think that's one thing that really sets us apart, that we have that trust within the journalism field. And for journalists, we give them free access to our tools. So that way they can leverage it as essentially an online portfolio for themselves that keeps all of their bylines and work in one place for them. That's definitely number one. Number two, and I know I'm biased a bit in saying this, but I do feel that our customer service is another thing that sets us apart from the 
other tools in the industry. And it's not just me thinking that. I mean, I hear it directly from our customers as well as my team who's engaging with our customers at least once a week, you know, someone complimenting our service over other tools. So that's number two. And then I think number three is really our product innovation. We, of course, want always want customer feedback and we want to make sure that our product is shifting in a way that more closely aligns with what our customers are asking for. But at the same time, we also want to innovate and try to bring the next big thing to PR teams or agencies that will help them do their jobs even better. Even if it's something that no one directly asked for. We want to be a step ahead of the industry, ideally. So I think innovation would be the third thing that sets us apart. So do you have any new big things coming up? The next big thing you mentioned? Yeah, so we've been investing a lot in podcasts, actually. So we definitely have seen an uptick in our customers asking about how to pitch to podcasts, being able to find contacts to pitch within podcasts, podcast measurement. There's a lot of work there that we're doing. And, you know, we're just scratching the surface there. And then the other area that we've been developing and iterating quite a bit in is on the reporting side. So we added dashboards to our platform and that tool is the most customizable reporting tool that anyone could access within the platform. And within the last week or two, we just added Google analytics as a possibility to dashboards as well. So if you do have access to a client's Google analytics account, or if you as a brand have a Google Analytics account, you're able to set that up within our platform and be able to correlate article volume to, you know, data that GA is ultimately turning out for you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are super excited about that, by the way. And um, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of different tools. So when you say that the the journalists use MuckRock as well, so they do they input all of their bylines in there or is that just fed? Because it seems like when I'm searching, I'm seeing a lot of bylines underneath um, a lot of journalists. So I can't imagine they're all taking the time to input yeah. that. You must have that kind of automated as well. Yep. That's, that's a great call out. We do definitely have a lot of technology that pulls in bylines across thousands and thousands of journalists, but journalists can customize their profile too. So yeah, it's definitely not every journalist that does that, but we really value their input into our platform as well as things that they suggest that can make it better, a better experience for them, which in turn tends to make it a better experience for all of our PR teams that are using the platform too. Yeah. They don't think it's junky because by the way, having worked in PR for quite a while, it feels like a lot of reporters just think anything to do with PR is kind of junky. And so if you can get them to respect the platform and understand that it actually might help them in the end, um, you know, and, and that we want, they would want to work with someone who's actually doing the research that Muckrack allows, because then we can give them actual pitches that relate and not just give them junk again. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Um, so tell us about you. You also, not only are you an amateur stand-up comedian, you also founded or co-founded the Thrive Network. Uh, can you tell us about the Thrive Network? Yeah. Yeah, I would love to. So I co-founded Thrive Network with my co-founder, Michelle Novak. And the reason we co-founded Thrive Network is because both of us were looking for a customer success community in New York City. And this was before COVID as well. We wanted to find some in-person networking that would enable us to meet other women in particular that were really trying to advance their careers within the field. And we couldn't find exactly the community that we were looking for. So we decided to create it and see if other people had a need for it too, or had a desire for a community like the one that we were envisioning. And our first event, I was lucky enough to be able to host it at Muckrack's previous office. And we packed almost 50 people into a, a little conference room in our old office and we, after that first meetup, we're like, all right, 
it's clear that there's a need for this. Other people want a community like the one we've been envisioning. And so we decided to keep building it. And we have over a thousand members now within our community. And again, we are still focused on empowering women. So whether it's someone who's looking to transition into customer success for the first time, or maybe someone who's a manager and looking to make their way to VP or SVP, we really like to cater to all titles. I think we've had the most success though with people that are early in their careers or looking to enter CS for the first time and trying to navigate how best to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. I don't come across a lot of information or knowledge about the CS community. Like, you know, you hear about PR and you hear about marketing and you hear about HR and all that. What I just don't, and it seems like, is it a new kind of a newer field that's growing quickly? Or just tell us about the field and what a role in that kind of field entails from when you're beginning to when you're under, you know, in the middle of your career. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So customer success has been around for a while now, but I think it's definitely gaining in popularity post pandemic. I think a lot of tech companies especially have realized that a continued investment in customer success is critical to really grow the company. Because at a certain point in your company trajectory, you realize that a lot of the growth should no longer come from new business alone. And that a lot of the growth can actually be realized through continuing to serve your existing customer base better. So I think that's a realization that a lot of tech companies have had since March of 2020. And also customer expectations, I think, are increasing especially in a a virtual setting. So having a team to support those increasing expectations is really critical too, if you ultimately want to keep the business that you have. Now, in terms of the roles or how to get into customer success or what it looks like, the main skills, I would say there's a lot of overlap between someone who works in PR and someone who works in customer success, because at its core, it's relationship building and it's project management and it's expectation setting. And I feel like those are all skills that you develop in PR too. So we've actually had some customers of ours that have since joined Muckrack as employees, which is always really rewarding to see and awesome to see. And you can come from a very a varied background into CS. There's not necessarily one path to get into it. You can come from sales, you could come from marketing, you could come from a completely different industry outside of tech. I've seen a lot of teachers recently that are looking to transition into tech and customer success can be a great place for them to start that transition. So I think the thing that's great about customer success is that as long as you have an empathy for customers and customer needs. And as long as you're very detail oriented and organized, you can really learn a lot on the job. So having a passion for the role and a passion for working with people and building relationships, you can learn a lot on the job. It's it's definitely possible to do as long as you are genuinely excited about working with people. Mm-hmm. Yay, that is so cool. So would you say that it's more, are there more women in that field? Yeah, that's a great question, too. I am really happy to say that a lot of our CS team is comprised of women. And I do find that that's typical in other SaaS companies, too. I think, of course, it's going to vary company to company. But I'm happy that we have so many women at Muckrack that are really thriving in a customer success role. Yeah, I mean, it's just not to make generalizations, but it's just kind of interesting. I don't know if it's good or bad that women tend to be in those kind of caretaking roles. I mean, PR is definitely caretaking, um, you know, (laughs) just thinking about taking care of the media, taking care of our client, like whatever. So, um, and I mean, even HR. So it's just kind of interesting that um, Mm -hmm. there's more. And that's great that you created a group for to empower women in the area. Yeah, it's, I've had so many great mentors since I've entered customer success. And for me, it's a way to give back to the community as well, because I realize that you can learn so much from people that have been through a lot of mistakes already, instead of you having to go through those same exact mistakes yourself, you can definitely benefit a lot by chatting with people who have already been there, done it and have some great advice to be able to share. 
Mm -hmm. So speaking of advice, a question I like to ask everybody at the end is what is the advice you would have given yourself when you were starting your career in customer success? Yeah, that is a really, a really good question for me. I think the biggest piece of advice that I would go back and give to my younger self would be to ask more questions. I feel like I've always been a pretty curious person, but the questions that I started to ask as I progressed further and further in my role and in the customer success field, the more successful I became and the better I could collaborate with other departments that ultimately helped increase my visibility as well as help to them in their roles too. So I think it's asking more questions and then also really evaluating or analyzing how you can serve others. You'll never hurt your career by finding ways to serve others in their roles and make them more successful. Mm -hmm. Lift people up for sure. Yep, exactly. Okay. Well, thank you. Any last minute, anything I didn't ask about you or Muckrock that you would like to tell us? Yeah, I think a good thing to end on would be we're really excited to help brands and agencies collaborate better together through our product. So any ideas that your listeners have for how we could better support? I know you mentioned most of your listeners are at firms. So any ways that we can help agencies work better with their clients through technology? I'm definitely all ears and would welcome anyone listening to connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay. And actually, I would just say that that whatever Vanessa just said is actually true. (laughs) From experience, I just have to say, whenever I have had some kind of idea or question when I was using the platform in the beginning before Kaylin started using it better than I am. um, uh, Yeah, you guys are very responsive, but not just like, oh, here's how you do it. It's just like, oh, how can we make this better? And how mm-hmm. can we improve it? And give us your list, like give us information you have, give us your list and we'll improve your list with any old notes that you have. So yep, that's really cool. And um, let's see, I guess, that, oh, you mentioned, how can people find you on LinkedIn? Yeah. So if you just search my name, Vanessa Newroar, I'll pop up. You can add Muckrack to under the company filter, but I think I might be the only Vanessa Newroar on LinkedIn. I actually don't know, but now I'm curious and we'll look <laughs> look yeah. into that. <laughs> yeah. And we'll share it in the show yes. notes and all the little socials and everything. So, well, thank you so much for your time, Vanessa. Yeah. Thank you too, Amy. It was a pleasure to be on your podcast today. And I'm really excited to hopefully connect with some of your listeners too. Thanks for listening. For more PR insight, be sure to check out Amy's book, A Modern Guide to Public Relations at prtalk.co. Also, please subscribe, rate, or leave us a review.